When a person is born into a world of lies, would they know the truth if they seen it? If the truth took away all the knowledge that they have learned in a lifetime, would they accept it? Or would it be easier to turn away and keep living in the only world they know? Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. Revelation 6 And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that he sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou not hurt the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four beasts say, Come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. So what are the four horses of the apocalypse? Are they actual people riding on horses, as often depicted? Although Yochanan, John, prophesied of the four horsemen in Revelation 6, the prophecy is also seen in the Tanakh, bearing witness to the prophecy that Yochanan spelled out in the book of Revelation. Zechariah 6 And I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot black horses, and in the third chariot white horses, and in the fourth chariot grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Adon? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Adon of the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth towards the south country. And the bay went forth, and sought to go, that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro from the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go towards the north country have given rest to my spirit in the north country. Notice the colors of the horses in this chapter are the same as listed in Revelation 6, and even the chapter number is the same. The gristled horse is a pale colored grayish horse with speckles. Some can be the color of dead, like a dead body, representing death. But Zechariah wasn't the only prophet that Yahuwah gave this message to. Ezekiel 14 The word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then I will stretch out my hand upon it, and will break the staff of the bread thereof, and will send famine upon it, and will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness. 
saith Yahuwah Elohim. If I cause newsome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it, so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through it because of the beast, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith Yahuwah Elohim, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, they only shall be delivered, but the land shall be a desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land, and say, Sword, go through the land, so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith Yahuwah Elohim, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job are in it, as I live, saith Yahuwah Elohim, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the Nusalem beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. In this verse, the sword is the red horse, the famine is the black horse, the Nusalem beast are controlled by the white horse mentioned in Revelation 9. They have a king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon. In Greek, he is called Apollyon. The pestilence is the pale horse. Let's look into the identity of the white horse. Revelation 6, 2, And I looked and behold, a horse white, and the one sitting on it, having a bow, and was given to him a crown, and he went forth overcoming, that he might conquer. First thing in this passage we see is the color white, which in scripture normally represents righteousness as in Psalm 51, 7. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. White can also mean sin and leprosy as in Exodus 4, 6. And Yahuwah says to him again, Now put your hand into your bosom. And when he puts his hand into his bosom and he brought it out, Behold, his hand is leprous as snow. White in this passage has the appearance of righteousness, but is truly leprous, representing wicked and evil sin. Next thing we notice is the writer has a bow. Jeremiah 9, 3, And they bend their tongues like their bow for lies but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, saith Yahuwah. So as you can see, he is so far a wicked, evil person hiding behind a cloak of righteousness and speaking lies. The next thing we notice is that he has a crown, but this crown is a Stephanos crown, this is Strong's 4735 Stephanos, properly a wreath or a garland awarded to a victor in the ancient athletic games, like the Greek Olympics. The crown of victory versus like the diadem Yeshua wears, which is a royal crown. In this verse, it uses the word overcoming and that he might conquer. In other verses, it says he is a conqueror bent on conquering. The word comes from Nikeo, which uh, is derived from the god, false god, Nike, which is a god of victory. The word Nikon means to conquer. To understand this word better, let's go back to Revelation 2. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne 
and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Revelation 2.12 And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things say he who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful servant, martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold to the doctrine of the Nicolaitan, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Satan's seat was Zeus' throne that, it, that was in the city of Pergamos at this time, and Antipas was martyred in a brazen bull-shaped altar at the Serapis temple. The bull shape represents Apis or Baal, and the name Serapis represents the blending of the religion Apis, Baal worship, and Osiris, Zeus worship, which comes from the first antichrist, Nimrod. Zeus and Baal are the same false god, which derives from sun god worship. In Mesopotamian culture, it was the worship of Marduk. Zeus is shown as Satan in these passages, but let's look at a few other passages that show Zeus as Satan. Luke 10, 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. In Indo-European mythology, the thunderbolt was identified with the Sky Father. This association is also found in later Hellenic representations of Zeus. Notice in this passage that it says he fell as lightning and Zeus's symbol is lightning, and he was a sky father. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice in this passage, he is called the prince of power of the air, this shows another connection between Zeus and Satan. In Revelation 2, verse 12 through 16, it talks about the church in Pergamos. In the letter to the church at Pergamos, the Nicolaitans were associated closely with those people who held the teaching of Balaam. This may have been a play on words. Nicolaitans could have been derived from two Greek words, Nikon, which means to conquer, and Laos, which meant people. Likewise, Balaam could be derived from two Hebrew words, Bela, which meant to conquer, and Hayam, which meant people. Nicolas and Balaam would then be the Greek and Hebrew forms of the same name, descriptive in each instance of an evil teacher who had influence over the people and brought them into bondage to heresy. The Nicolaitans, therefore, were the early Christian pagan syncretists, the false teachers that crept into the church who disguised themselves as followers of Mashiach, who professed to be his ministers and his servants, but led the people astray. As we go back to Revelation 6, 2, you notice Nikon and Nicosia. Notice how John uses the word Nikon 
and Nicosia in this passage. This points back to the word Nicolaitans in the previous chapters, showing that the white horse will conquer the people through false doctrines, doctrines which are anti-Mashiach or anti-Christ. He will be crowned with the victory over the people he has conquered through false doctrines. Antipas was sentenced to death on the altar of Zeus, Serapis, otherwise known as the throne of Satan. Even in the midst of the flames, the elderly bishop Antipas died praying for his church. In 1878, the German engineer Karl Humann started excavations on the Serapis Zeus altar in order to move it to Berlin on Museum Island and the museum opened in 1930. Also there was the Ishtar Gate of ancient Babylon. The gate was known as the Gate of Hell. The Zeppelin Field Tribute was built between 1935 and 1937 and the National Socialists used this area for their party rallies. Architect Albert Speer models the grandstand after the ancient Pergamum altar of Serapis Zeus. Hitler would later receive the adoration of the masses from this altar. It would be from this place that all evil propaganda towards the Jews during the war would be announced. Hitler's final solution is now known as the Holocaust, a word that comes from a Greek word meaning a holy burnt animal sacrifice. Does that remind you of the faithful martyr Antipas? As you can see in these images, the Zeppelin Tribune was modeled almost identical to the Serapis Zeus altar, which also sits in Germany. Notice also that our United States Capitol is also modeled after the Serapis Zeus altar. Three years after parts of the Pergamum altar were returned to Berlin, the Berlin Wall was built dividing the city for 28 years. During the 13 years or so, the altar was in Russia. The Cold War began is there any doubt that Satan is at work dividing countries? Just four years after 300 boxcar loads of relics from the Pergamon was returned to Germany from Russia, the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred in 1962. What was not revealed until recently is that the United States agreed to dismantle our missiles in Turkey that were aimed at Russia. Those missiles were in the Pergamon region, not far from Pergamon, and they were called PGM, as in Pergamon, 19 Jupiter ballistic missiles. The agreement was that the U.S. would dismantle the missiles, but it would be done in secret. The Roman god Jupiter is the same as the Greek god Zeus. As a presidential candidate, Barack Obama made his initial acceptance speech in 2008 from the DNC presidential nomination from a nearly perfect representation of the Pergamum altar of Satan. When this was pointed out, many of the leftist bloggers and news outlets went crazy. As you can see, Satan has been very busy deceiving us all. The white horse has been busy deceiving the masses. It began long before the death of our Savior and even before the flood. The prophets of Baal trying to deceive the followers of Yahuwah by sending the Moabite women to cause them to commit sexual immorality and turn to idol worship. Like Balaam, the Nicolaitans crept in ideas to lead followers of Yeshua astray to idol worship and false doctrines. Do what thou wilt, you are saved by grace. As you can see, it not only affected the religious system, but has come forth to conquer the world as we know it. Do you see more paganism in our capital than just the design of the building being modeled after the altar of Serapis? 
Let's look into it further. In ancient times, when people worshipped Baal, they would erect the high places. Jeremiah 32, 35, they built the high places of Baal that are in the valley of ben Hanon to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire of Moloch, which I had not commanded them, nor had it entered my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Jeremiah or Yahu said that they built the high places. What are the high places of Baal? 2 Kings 10, 26. They brought out the sacred pillars of the house of Baal and burned them. So what are the sacred pillars mentioned in these passages? Jeremiah 43, 13. He shall break the obelisk of the Helopolis, which is in the land of Egypt, and the temples of the gods of Egypt he shall burn with fire. The word obelisk is the same word as the high places. It's strong 46, 76. Mitzvah, the definition that Bible Hub gives is a, it's an obelisk, a pillar, pillars, or a stump. This is the high places mentioned all throughout scripture. In Vatican showing there is a Baal worship there. This is another obelisk or high place. It's the obelisk of Osiris, the Egyptian word for Baal. There's another obelisk in Italy. David modeled the one world tower after this type of obelisk. There are obelisks on almost every country in the world, including ours. This is the high places mentioned all throughout scripture. This is the Washington Monument. As, seen, as we've seen previously, the Capitol was built like the Sarah Pass throne, and outside of it is this, which is Baal's Palace. But surely our first president, George Washington, didn't have anything to do with Baal, right? The first inauguration of George Washington as the first president of the United States was held on Tuesday, April the 30th, 1789, on the balcony of the Federal Hall in New York City, New York. April 30th begins Beltane Festival or Walpurgis Night. So what is Beltane Festival? Stillness in the Storm editor says on April 30th and in the following day, May 1st, are two of the most important cultic appear periods in the calendar year. This is the time of the year when Baal or Baal was killed and sent to the underworld to be resurrected by his lover sister, Anat. It is also the day that Adam Weishaupt started the Illuminati in 1776, 110 years after the Sabbatan cult was formed in by a satanic power players in the year 1666. Washington was deified on the Capitol Dome, surrounded by a bunch of pagan gods. There are 72 pentagrams also that surrounds the image from the lesser key of Solomon. There are 13 stars that surround Washington and there were 13 parts of Osiris found when he was chopped up. The 13 parts of Osiris in the dome and the missing 14th part is the phallus or obelisk which is outside otherwise known as the Washington Monument, one of the high places mentioned in scripture. Surrounding Washington is the pagan god Poseidon or Neptune. He represents marine. Then we have the pagan god Minerva or Athena, which represents science. Then you have the pagan god Columbia, which means war. Pagan god Ceres or Demeter, which means which is for agriculture. You have the pagan god Vulcan or Hypatius, which is mechanics. The pagan god Hermes or Mercury, which represents merchants. 
Washington is deified with other pagan deities as Zeus. E pluribus unum, or one from many, does this mean one God from many, a symbol of synchronism that we have in the churches, pushing towards one world God? As you can see from the sun god images in this slide, you can see Apollo, god of oracles, healing, archery, music, arts, sunlight, and knowledge. He also is the equivalent of Sol Invictus, another sun god. This is Sol Invictus flying through the sky with his chariots, giving gifts away to the little children. Sound familiar? Nimrod supervised the operation and was called the sun god and worshipped as such. To end this worship, Nimrod's uncle Shem, Noah's eldest son, killed Nimrod and cut his body into 14 pieces and scattered his body parts across the land. Ishtar, his wife, or Semiramis, was the widow of Nimrod. She claimed to have been impregnated by Nimrod through the rays of the sun and later had a son by the name of Tammuz, who had a miraculous birth on 1225. Ishtar married her son Tammuz, and pagan sun god worshippers celebrated the birthday of the reincarnate sun god on December 25th. After Yahuwah put an end to the tower and divided up the languages, the sun worshippers went away speaking about this deity, but in 70 different languages, and that is why there is a sun god in every country. You can find this at wikipedia.org, list of solar deities. Revelation 6-2 And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Apollo is the son of Zeus, Satan. Therefore he is the Antichrist, the sun god, who carries the bow and the crown. Notice the bow being given to him by the deity Hermes. And at the top, he's given the Stephanos crown just had listed in Revelation 2. He was given the crown for defeating another deity. Notice in the picture to the right, the hand symbol he is, he is making. He is also holding a lyre, which is the instrument he made. And he is the father of lyres. Ezekiel 8:16. He then brought me into the inner court of the house of Yahuwah, and there at the entrance to the temple between the portico and the altar were about twenty-five men, with their backs towards the temple of Yahuwah and their faces toward the east. They were bowing down to the sun in the east. Notice Washington making the same hand symbol. You can see here we have Sol Invictus, Mithras, the Colossus of Rhodes, and our very own Statue of Liberty. Liberty of what, you might want to ask yourself. As you can see in these three images, you have Zeus and Jupiter, all three making this hand symbol. Here you have Hitler making a hand symbol. Why would President Washington and Hitler be making the same hand symbol? What does this hand symbol represent? It represents the letter M or the letter W. In, e in either case, it's made up of three V's or three V's, which in Hebrew is the number of six. This hand gesture represents the number 666, the number of the beast. And as you can see, the beast system is a worldwide system that has been very busy deceiving even the elect. Notice the www as in the World Wide Web www dot or 666 dot 
Notice in this picture you have Aries on the right with a hand symbol. And then you have Zeus, a Zeus painting with him looking at the secret hand symbol. Notice in this uh, picture you have Athena doing a secret hand symbol. Notice in this picture you have Alexander Hamilton. Maria Orsic was the leader of the Nazi occult, the Brill Society. She was a psychic medium and a demon conjurer. She is associate of Aleister Crowley. Jack Parsons was a student of Aleister Crowley and Majori Cameron Parson, his wife down below, was a leader of the Dilemma Society. Nicholas Copernicus was the creator of the heliocentric model, which is a, he was a sun god worshiper and the word helio is from the god, helio. As you can see in these images, this is an ancient deception. Sol Invictus' birthday just so happens to be December 25th, and it has been so for way before the birth of Mashiach, Yahoshua. It marks the winter solstice and it is the renewing of the sun, and it is a festival of celebrating the sun god who would fly through the sky on his chariot. Sound familiar? The Saint Nick or Nicholas just so happens to be the same Nicolation in which, in which Yehoshua said that he hated in Revelation. The tree that is put up is another pagan festival to the god Tammuz. Jeremiah 10. Do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heavens. For the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen, with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. Jeremiah 7.18 The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough, to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. The cookies and milk are a bread offering and a drink offering, to their pagan deity. Every sun god was born on 1225. Amun-Ra, Horus, Mithra, Tammuz, and Zeus. Armashiach was born in late September around the Feast of Tabernacles. Easter Sunday, Ishtar, also known by her biblical name, Semiramis, Queen of Heaven, widow of Nimrod, and mother of Tammuz. Easter is the bare-breasted pagan fertility goddess of the East. They believe she came out of heaven in a giant egg, landing on the Euphrates River at sunrise on the first Sunday after the vernal equinox and busted out and turned a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. To honor this event, pagan sun worshipers would go out early in the morning and face the east to watch their sun god arise over the horizon before having a mass sacrifice in which priest of Easter would sacrifice three month old human infants and take the eggs of Easter and dye them in the blood of the sacrificed infants. The blood color red Easter eggs would later hatch on 1225, the same day her son Tammuz the reincarnate sun god would be born. Ishtar married her son Tammuz. He went pig hunting and was gored to death by a wild boar and that is why the pagans eat ham on Easter. Tammuz was killed when he was 40 years old. Pagans fasted one day each year of the years he lived leading into Easter. It is called Lent by the Catholics. The white horse, as you can see, is the pagan sun god cult. 
that has conquered not only their religious system, but the entire world. What started in ancient times has been hidden in plain sight for thousands of years. Our media, education system, government, entertainment, pharmaceutical and religious system, all brainwashing and conquering the people, all while pushing forward their agenda for a one world government system. They want to resurrect a new world order leader, another Osiris, Apollo, Nimrod, whose coming is according to the working of Satan.